Your portfolio is really important for finding a position in what's quite a tough job market right now. I often get people sending me their portfolio asking for advice and I saw this one and I thought I'd share it with you because it relates to a lot of people and what they're going through. So this is Vision Renders portfolio and they're an environment artist and they're looking for that type of work in the industry. And I would say their skill level is relatively high, but there are a few gaps that I'm noticing and I'd like to go through and share them with you and see what you think. So first of all, when someone's looking at a portfolio like this, they'll give it only a few seconds. So your main image up here, this header, that's really important and you want your strongest piece up there. For me, although this looks okay, there's nothing special about it, nothing screaming, I'm a great artist, it's just fairly dull, unfortunately. But I can see that they're a relatively good artist, so I might go a bit further and look at some of their work. So it's clear that they're an environment artist and they do product renders as well. So what I'm looking for is really high quality textures and high quality models. I'm not necessarily looking at things like topology because they're not looking for game artwork or anything like that, just environments and product renders. So you can go a bit higher poly with that sort of thing. So let's start with the environments. So there's a range here and some look relatively good. Some look a little bit weak though, and you're kind of only as good as your weakest post. Because as an employer, I'm looking at this and thinking, this is their highest quality of work. So if there's a poor piece in here, then I'm going to start worrying that that's actually their general level. Let's delve in a little bit deeper then. So let's take the first one. This is the image that we saw on that banner. We're seeing an animation here, but all the animation is is rain. And that's not really giving me any extra information or making the piece stand out in any special way. Let's scroll down and look at the still image. It's very high contrast, so it's hard for me to make out these areas in here. And that's fair enough, I guess. You want to frame this area here where the city is, but the city's kind of bland and dull. I like this model here. That's quite a good model. And you've obviously got some skill with building models. But in terms of creating a story, I can see that this is some kind of wreckage maybe a bomb's hit it or something like that, but I'm not seeing that in the rest of the city. It's kind of leaving me with a bit too many questions and I don't feel compelled to find out more. And really that's probably something you need to concentrate on, especially if you're a good modeler and you're good at textures, then start thinking about creating a story, inviting people to really look at the image and figure stuff out. So I kind of want something in the foreground here, which is our focal point. We've got a sign here, but maybe we need a bit more where we're looking at some kind of evidence of the destruction to work out what actually happened. Now I can't zoom into this, but hopefully you can see in the video, the textures are pretty good, but they're not great. We've got some very sharp lines here where this damage has happened and you don't generally see that. If I bring up this free pick image here that I just quickly searched for, and we've got a damaged building, you can see that the edges are really, really worn as opposed to the edges in here, which are quite sharp. There's a huge amount of rubble in these areas. You've even got the bits of metal here. You've got a window bashed in here. So there's different types of rubble. Whereas this one here, we've got just lots of bricks. We have got here what appears to be a kind of plastic bag full of rubble, but we can't see it very well. We've got smaller bits of rubble here, bigger bits here, but where's the metal, where's the plastic, and those sort of things that you'd expect to be in a building. We have got some metal sticking out here, which is good. But again, we've got this really sharp edge, which just doesn't look right. So that's the next step that you need to go to. So if you're at a similar level where you can build models fairly comfortably, it's that next step of the real fine detail that you want that creates more of a immersive feel. Let's try another one. This one's not too bad. We've got an interesting environment here. It's a little bit dark. Think about your focal points. My eyes are drawn to this sign here this cake here and then this light here. So I'd probably just crop it here so I didn't get this light in, it wasn't a focal point. But maybe you want to see this area up here, therefore you need to lighten the rest of the image a little bit, perhaps put some lights in other areas where we want to focus. I actually quite like this kind of sideboard area here with the coffee maker I think, but I can't see it very well. So a wall light here would be quite useful, shine on this area, make it uh, more of a focal point so I can see what's going on. We've got renders from different angles. That's good. That's what you want to be showing. I'm a little bit concerned with the different sizes. I feel like the wine bottles seem a bit big for this alcove here. If this is a microwave, that seems a bit too big. It's just not quite sitting right. Maybe I'm wrong, but if you are doing environments, make sure you are measuring everything 
in terms of finding an actual reference and finding out the sizes of that reference. Make sure they're precise. I'm just for some reason feeling uncomfortable with some of the sizes so it feels slightly out to me but that could just be me getting it wrong. So initially this looks quite fun. We've got a bit of atmosphere going on with the lighting but again the textures. As an environment artist you need to be very very good at the textures and we've got a really sharp line down the edge here so we've got no displacement on this wall. We've got normal maps and the probably the roughness maps and things like that by the looks of the lights over here but it's very sharp down here and those sharp edges make it look very digital. They don't give it a very warm feel and they're kind of a flat feeling about it. So in this case working on the textures is the next step. The other bit that's missing for me a little bit here although this is one of the better pieces is the story. What is going on here? What's interesting about this place? It feels a little bit lifeless, although we have got a cake on the side here. We've got what looks to be a cheese board here. Maybe a close-up of these would be helpful. I'll scroll down a bit to see if there's any more. Oh yes, we've got a close-up here. Although we're focusing on this area here rather than this area here. That's not bad necessarily, but I'd like to see more of these objects closer up and see what your texturing is like when it comes to those fine details. Scrolling through a bit further, we've got some interesting textures up here. But again, it's a really sharp line down here, so there's no displacement map. I would like to see this area a little bit more closely here. Scrolling through a bit further, we've got a chess set. Again, the size of the pieces actually look very small on this chess set. Um, so just check your sizes. Make sure you're getting those accurate. This lamp as well looks a little bit short. So again, this could just be me and you've found some particularly unusual objects in terms of their size, um, or maybe I'm just reading it wrong but that's my initial impression. There's something odd about the sizes and that's really important to get right as an environment artist. If you like this content, then check out my Ultimate 3D Artist program. It's an eight week boot camp designed to help you grow as an artist and get you to the next level fast. It's got modules with assignments and you get direct feedback, just like you're seeing in this video here. Check out the link in the description for more information on that. It's on sale at the moment and the next program starts on September the 7th. So make sure you sign up before then so you don't miss out. So we've got a subway train here. Again, where's the story? Great model, fantastic. We've got details like the um, posters and um, adverts and so forth. The text just look a little bit nicer here, although still very sharp in places, but you will tend to see that more on metallic type objects and plastic objects, you see more sharp edges. But where is the story? What's going on here? Why are we looking at a subway train? It's a good render, looks great but there's no personality. It's quite flat in that sense. I do like your lighting. I think coming in from the side there is nice. We've got these nice shadows being cast on the floor. We've got a nice glow just here, which looks really interesting. But again, where's the story? Where's the dirt? Where's the empty cup that's rolling along the floor? Where's the wear on the seats or the dents or the, or the broken bits or the graffiti maybe? There needs to be an element of story to push it to the next level. So I'm seeing a similar thing from this one. The personality is kind of missing. It's a bit flat, very good render, good models, good textures in this case, but it's just a bit flat. There's no interest. There's no focal point that I'm excited about. And if we go through, it's a very similar story here. This is a weaker piece, I would say. Your other pieces look better. This one seems particularly sparse. We've got a few items over the corner here, but there's a big, huge, area of blank space where you'd expect that to be filled and lived in more and it's lost that sort of personality. This one looks a bit more interesting. For some reason the hospital bed, you feel like there's going to be a story here. The bed itself is a great model, the wheelchair is a great model, but then there's no story to pull us in. Uh, I feel like we want maybe some flowers and a card here, perhaps someone's passed away recently sort of pulling at people's emotions, wondering what's going on. It's the beginning of a story, but at the moment it's just a hospital room and that's it. So get the story in there. This one's a weaker render just because we can hardly see anything. I think it's the same wheelchair as well. And I'd be concerned that you haven't completed many projects if you're reusing things in different projects and different renders. You can get away with a bit of that sort of repetition, but it's quite clear that that is the wheelchair from the previous render. And therefore it makes me concerned that you haven't done many projects and you haven't got a lot of experience. This is another one where the lighting's really nice, but where's the story? We've got lots of space in between these cups and saucers. Where's the teaspoon? Where's the sugar pot? Uh, that sort of thing. If we've got this nice tea set, where are the chairs that 
um, for people to sit at the table. Uh, you need to think about the story, the uses of these items. I'd like this to be a bit closer in here and have a music stand, loads of music books, maybe a little bit more messy, perhaps a couple of instruments. What else do maybe a metronome that uh, a musician might have? I want it strewn with uh, musical score and uh, pieces of paper, notes, that sort of thing. Then there's the personality. I'll just quickly look at the next one because this I think is your weakest piece. Looking at the logs, the texturing and the modeling is quite weak. The grass itself doesn't look like grass. It's sort of very fake feel about it. And the texture of the roof is really uniform. It looks really very fake, uh, very sharp lines in these pillars. The textures just repeated all over. We want to see some natural feeling coming through. This looks very unnatural and digital at the moment. The grass particularly is quite bad. I'd want to see you using just a plug-in for that. Uh, so getting a sort of vegetation pack and filling this up with some nice looking grass and the logs there. The logs don't really serve any purpose either. You've got a really nice clean house that you'd expect in sort of a suburban setting, but then you've got logs which you'd expect in an old woodsman's cottage or something. So think about the story that you're developing here and how these items fit together. But I'd personally suggest taking this piece out altogether because it actually pulls down the rest of your portfolio. Let's just quickly zip through some of the others. Again, storyline, I'm thinking of storyline here. You've reused this lamp from earlier. That's probably okay to be fair. One or two models that you've reused isn't a big deal, but do be thinking about that as I said earlier. The classroom's an interesting one. It looks quite nice with the light coming in from the side but I want to see chalk writing on the board. I want to see it absolutely littered with notes that are half torn and got hand smudge prints on them or something like that. Uh, they've crinkled and creased up. I want the atmosphere in here. All the chairs are way too clean. The tables are too clean. They're all in these perfect rows lined up perfectly. You need some distortion here to make it feel lived in. If we take a look at this image, I searched on Google, old classroom, and this is from Wikipedia. Look at this desk. That's the sort of texturing level you need to get to to get a job as an environment artist. It's got dents in there, scratches. You've really got to look closely at these items and mimic them to add that character. Look at the chalkboard. It's got bits rubbed off and it's got some text on there. You can tell this has all been written by one person, but this looks like it's a note for someone else. This looks different writing again. It's got this big map up here. Again, it's creased, crinkled. It's got a big drum here and these old satchels. This has character. And it makes me think of all the lessons that have gone on in this room, like music lessons, all the uh, school kids that had their satchels and were using them to walk to school and so forth to carry their books. It just creates a picture in your mind of all these different things. Whereas if we go back to this one, it's a bit sterile and there's not that atmosphere that you get from the other one where you're looking at the different items, excited about what was going on in that classroom. So hopefully that's given you an idea about how if you're at a similar level, you're a good modeler, relatively good at textures, how do you get to the next level and get employed? And for me, taking the stance of an employer, I'm looking for someone with a bit more spark that can create stories, that has ideas, that pulls me into their portfolio rather than it being a bit sterile and bland and things I've seen many times before. So watch out for those aspects in your portfolio. Give it your own personality. So hopefully that's helpful to you out there. If you've got any thoughts yourself, then do comment below. If you like this sort of content, then do let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.